Hi guys, in this video we'll be asking what is the relative formula mass? We'll then look at balanced equations and the relative formula mass before ending with a summary. So firstly, what is the relative formula mass? Well, if you've seen our video on atomic structure, you will have seen how we can describe the mass of some atomic particles such as electrons and neutrons with reference to the mass of a proton. Similarly, we can describe the masses of atoms by comparing them to a standard atom. This gives us what is known as a relative atomic mass. And we have a formal definition for this, which is that the relative atomic mass, or AR, of an element is the average mass of one atom of that element relative to one twelfth the mass of one atom of carbon-12. That's quite a wordy definition, but we can break it down. Firstly, carbon-12 is just the most common isotope of carbon, containing six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. Carbon-12 therefore has a mass number of 12. Remembering that we get the mass number from the sum of the number of protons and number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom of that element. And that is where this 1 12th comes from in the definition, allowing the mass of the lightest element hydrogen to be close to 1. Remember, electrons will also contribute some mass to the mass of an atom, but this is very small compared to protons and neutrons. The point is that this is a wordy definition that you need to remember, but that 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon-12 was just chosen in order to give chemists all over the world one reference point. We can find our relative atomic masses by using the periodic table. Each block of the periodic table contains the name of the element and as well as its chemical symbol and then two numbers. The number at the top is the relative atomic mass and the number at the bottom is the atomic number or number of protons in the nucleus of an atom of that element. If we look at our definition, we said that we define the relative atomic mass relative to 1 12th the mass of one atom of carbon-12. Therefore, it's not surprising that carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12, which we can see by finding in the periodic table and looking at the top number, which will be the larger number out of the two. We can also see, for example, that oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16 and neon has a relative atomic mass of 20. So, this is really useful for comparing atoms, but most reactions don't just involve atoms. And for compounds, we can define what is known as the relative formula mass. The relative formula mass, or MR, of a compound is the sum of all the relative atomic masses, AR, of the atoms in that compound. Best way to think about this is to look at some examples. For example, what is the relative formula mass of magnesium hydroxide? We're going to tackle this question in steps, where the first step is to work out the chemical formula of the compound that you're interested in, which in this case is magnesium hydroxide. If you've seen our videos on ions, you will know that magnesium is a group 2 metal, and therefore there has two electrons in its outer shell. In the formation, Magnesium will lose these two outer shell electrons easily in order to form the Mg2 plus positively charged ion. And this is the ion that we find within magnesium hydroxide. We can tell that we're going to be forming ions because here magnesium hydroxide is a compound between a metal, magnesium, and non-metals, hydrogen and oxygen in the hydroxide. The bonding between a metal and a non-metal is going to be ionic, which means that we need to form ions. The hydroxide ion is one that will come up a lot and you need to remember. It has the chemical symbol of OH- containing oxygen and hydrogen with a single negative charge. Overall, we know that ionic compounds will have a neutral charge. So therefore we can see that in order to balance the 2 plus charge on the magnesium ion, we need two hydroxide ions and therefore that the formula for magnesium hydroxide is going to be one magnesium ion and two hydroxide ions where we write the formula for the hydroxide ion in brackets with a small two next to it to show that we have that twice. The second step is to work out how many atoms of each element you have in your compound. For example, in magnesium hydroxide, 
we have one atom of magnesium. We also have two atoms of oxygen because there's one in each of the hydroxide ions and therefore also two atoms of hydrogen. Then you need to look up the relative atomic masses of these atoms in the periodic table. So we have magnesium, oxygen and hydrogen. Let's look at the periodic table. We already said that magnesium is a group two element and therefore we can find it on the left hand side of the periodic table with the other metals. Here it is. We also need to find hydrogen, which is the first element in the periodic table, and oxygen, which is a group six non-metal. Remembering that the relative atomic mass of the element is given by the larger of the two numbers, we can see that magnesium has a relative atomic mass of 24, hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of one, and oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16. So let's write those down so we can remember. Magnesium has a relative atomic mass of 24, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is just one. Finally, we need to look at our definition for relative formula mass. We said for compounds, the relative formula mass is the sum of all the relative atomic masses of the atoms in the compound. We now have all the information we need to work out the relative formula mass of magnesium hydroxide. So, the relative formula mass, or MR, of magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2, will be equal to the sum of the relative atomic masses of all of the atoms. So, we worked out that we have one atom of magnesium and that magnesium has a relative atomic mass of 24. So therefore, the contribution of magnesium is 24. We have two oxygen atoms and each of these has a relative atomic mass of 16. So we need to add 16 twice. Finally, we have two hydrogen atoms with a relative atomic mass of one. So we need to add one twice also. If we add all these numbers together, we can see that the relative formula mass equals 58. We can now move on to our second example, which is, what is the relative formula mass of calcium carbonate? We're going to follow exactly the same four steps as we did for magnesium hydroxide. And the first of these is to work out the chemical formula of calcium carbonate. One of the key ions that you'll need to know for your exams is the carbonate ion, which has the formula CO3 with a two minus charge. And anytime you see carbonate of a compound, you know that it's going to contain this ion. We know we're going to be thinking about ions here because we're looking at a compound formed between a metal, calcium, and non-metals which will therefore contain ionic bonds. So, how about the other ion? Well, calcium is a group two metal, meaning that it has two electrons in its outermost shell. When forming an ion, it is most likely to lose these two electrons in order to form the two plus calcium cation. If we look at the two ions, CO32 minus and Ca2 plus, we can see that we can form an overall neutral ionic compound with a one-to-one -one ratio of these two. Giving calcium carbonate the chemical formula CaCO3. So that's our first step complete. The second step is to look at this formula and note down how many atoms of each element are present. For example, we have one calcium atom, one carbon atom, and three oxygen atoms. These are the component atoms that come together in order to form the ions and then form calcium carbonate. We then need to look up the relative atomic masses for each of these elements in the periodic table. For our example of magnesium hydroxide, we already found oxygen, which has a relative atomic mass of 16. We can find calcium below magnesium, also within group two. And we can see that it has a relative atomic mass of 40. Finally, carbon is in the same period as oxygen meaning that it is on the same row in the periodic table. Carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12. Remembering that in each case, the relative atomic mass is the larger of the two numbers. So now we can note these down. The relative atomic mass, or AR, of calcium is 40. For carbon, it's 12. And for each of the oxygen atoms, it's 16. We are now ready to find the relative formula mass or MR of calcium carbonate. 
Using the definition, that the relative formula mass of a compound is the sum of the relative atomic masses of the atoms that make up that compound. Therefore, for calcium carbonate, we need to sum 40 for the one calcium atom, plus 12 for our one carbon atom, plus 16 three times for each of the oxygen atoms. If you add these numbers together, you can see that the MR, or relative formula mass, of calcium carbonate is 100. Let's look at one final example, which is, what is the relative molecular mass of water? You'll notice that this question is phrased slightly differently. Before, we asked, what is the relative formula mass? And here we're asking, what is the relative molecular mass? This is because water is a small covalent molecule. For covalent molecules, the term relative molecular mass is sometimes used in place of relative formula mass, but they mean exactly the same thing and can be interchanged. So we'll follow exactly the same four steps. We know the chemical formula for water is H2O, and therefore that water contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. From the periodic table, we've already seen that the AR or relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, as it's the lightest element. We also just saw that the AR of oxygen is 16. Remembering that we always find our relative atomic masses on the periodic table. Therefore, we can sum these together in order to get the relative molecular mass or relative formula mass of water, which will be equal to 16 for the oxygen atom, plus 1 twice for each of the hydrogen atoms. 16 plus 1 plus 1 is 18. So we can easily see that the relative molecular mass or relative formula mass of water is 18. We went through this example a lot more quickly and you'll find that with practice finding relative formula masses will become simple as long as you follow the same steps. So now we know about relative atomic and formula masses. How can we use them? In a balanced equation, the sum of the relative formula masses, or MR, and relative atomic masses, AR, values for the reactants is equal to that of the products. This follows directly from our law of conservation of mass, which says that the mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of the products. No atoms can ever be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. Let's check that this is true by working through an example. Here we have the symbol equation for the neutralisation reaction between hydrochloric acid, HCl, and sodium hydroxide, NaOH, in order to produce sodium chloride, NaCl, and water. In order to see if the sum of the relative formula masses for the products and the reactants is the same, we're going to need to work out the relative formula masses for each of these component compounds. Let's start by thinking about what elements are present. For example, in hydrochloric acid, we have hydrogen as well as chlorine. And in sodium hydroxide, we have hydrogen again, but also sodium and oxygen. As we said, no atoms are created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. These are exactly the same as what we have on the product side. Therefore, these are the elements that we're going to need to know the relative atomic masses for. And we can find these in our periodic table. We have hydrogen, chlorine, which is a group 7 non-metal, sodium, which is a group 1 metal, and finally oxygen, which is in group 6. From here we can see that the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, oxygen is 16, chlorine is 35.5, and sodium is 23. So let's fill that in in our little table. Hydrogen has an AR of 1, chlorine is 35.5, Sodium's is 23, and finally, oxygen's is 16. We can now start to think about calculating the relative formula mass for each of the reactants and products. To start with, let's think about hydrochloric acid, or HCl. We know that the relative formula mass, or MR, of HCl is going to be the sum of the component relative atomic masses for the atoms that make up the compound. Therefore, it's going to be 1 for the hydrogen, plus 35.5 for our chlorine, which gives HCl a relative formula mass of 
sodium hydroxide, NaOH, will have a relative formula mass of 23 for the sodium, plus 16 for a single oxygen, plus 1 for a single hydrogen, giving a grand total of 40. We can do exactly the same for the products, where the relative formula mass of NaCl will be 35.5 for the chlorine, plus 23 for the sodium, which makes 58.5. Finally, we saw on the last slide that the relative formula or molecular mass of water is 1 plus 1 plus 16 for the two hydrogens and one oxygen, giving a total of 18. So, what is our total relative formula mass for our reactants and what is it for our products? Our total relative formula mass for our reactants is equal to 36.5 plus 40 which is 76.5. Similarly, our total relative formula mass for our products is 58.5 plus 18, which is also equal to 76.5. The sum of the relative formula mass of the reactants is exactly equal to the sum of the relative formula mass of the products. And this will hold true for any balanced equation. You can use this fact in order to check that you've correctly calculated the relative formula mass values for any substances in your balanced equation. As the sum for the substances on the left hand side of the reaction arrow should equal the sum for the substances on the right hand side. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCSE chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.